Insoab finally takes a sigh of relief once he gets to the washroom. All those questions about his school life made him nervous, so he gave himself a pep talk while washing his hands. He wonders what they are talking about in his absence and decides to return as soon as possible. But just then, a man bumps into him. He asks him if he has a lighter. Insoab tells him that he doesn't have one because he doesn't smoke, but the man doesn't seem to get it. He sounds a little weird too. Is he a foreigner? Insoab tells him again that he doesn't have a lighter, but before he can finish his sentence, somebody grabs him from behind. He is holding Insoab with his hand covering his mouth, so no sound comes out even if he tries to shout. Back in his school days, he was always a target of bullying. People used to bump into him and call him names all the time. A guy named Fred, in particular, was a source of misery since the start of the semester, always following him around, bullying him, and calling him abusive terms for Asian women. He was always on his case for no apparent reason, and that one time he even stepped on the books he got from the library and acted like it was none of his business. It was a book on the Korean language. When Insoab tried to explain that it was a book from the library and he needed to return it, he snatched it out of his hand and demanded to know if he was planning to return to his country, which is why he was reading it. In all honesty, Insoab had no recollection of his motherland. It was just a far-off place to him, like anyone else here. He had learned Korean since he was young in his father's behest, but he never considered himself a Korean citizen. But these guys were none the wiser. They kicked him, beat him up, and called him names until Insoab had to cry and agree to whatever absurd demands they had. He was willing to leave if that's what they wanted, only if they returned the book to him. He shouted at them, saying he didn't want to be near those jerks, but they had still made fun of him. They kept mentioning China when Insoab had told them multiple times that Korea and China were different places altogether. Fred was even more cruel and used to beat him until Insoab was gasping for breath. Even his friends were not able to stop him. They knew that harassing someone in front of people was going to land them in trouble, so they had dragged Insoab into an empty storage space. Fred used to continue beating him and asking where he was going until Insoab had to give up and reply to him. He hated every moment of his school life then. He hated that he had to go through all of this when none of it was his fault. He had to give up and admit that he was willing to go anywhere as long as Fred wasn't there. But this response had made Fred even angrier and Insoab waited for the next devastating punch. But what had happened was even more horrendous. Fred had tried to force himself on him while using derogatory remarks. Insoab had tried his best to get him off of him, but he was too strong. Everything would have ended that day if not for Jenny, who had whacked Fred on his head with a trophy. She looked so scared while asking him if he was okay. But what is happening now is no different than before. Insoab is trying to shout for help and get out of this jerk's grasp, but he is too strong. What he is doing with him down there is even more appalling. Insoab could do nothing but shed silent tears, asking for someone, for Jenny to come and help him, but nobody could hear his pleas. He prayed if only someone could come and help him just once. And just then, there is a loud bang on the stall door. Just like Jenny had stood before him that day, asking if he could stand, somebody was here to help him now. His prayer has been answered. Just like that day, Wu Yan is at the door and asks the jerk what he is doing. Insoab finally opens his eyes and finds that he is in the car's backseat, leaning on Wu Yan's shoulder with tears streaming down his face. He jumps in surprise when Wu Yan asks him if he was having a nightmare just a few moments ago. With his cheery smile, he asks Insoab if he is still feeling queasy. Insoab remains silent. Now that he is witnessing Wu Yan back to his usual charming self, the things that transpired just moments ago did not even seem real to him. He had come in with a bang and quickly swooped Insoab out of that hideous man's arms. He then asked him to go to the car since the CEO and Mr. Cho were waiting for him. While Insoab still struggled to explain what was happening, he sternly asked him to go back and wait in the car. He had then squeezed his shoulder and explained that this had nothing to do with him not wanting to know what happened, but simply because he didn't want to get noticed by anyone in the vicinity. He didn't want anyone to see him in such a nasty mess. A fight had broken out as soon as Wu Yan stopped speaking because the hideous man was angry at being called nasty. He had grabbed the front of Wu Yan's hoodie and was cussing at him constantly, asking who he was. Insoab wanted to help, but Wu Yan wasn't ready to listen to anything. He ordered Insoab to step out. Back to the present, Wu Yan passes a water bottle to Insoab, which he accepts gratefully. Just then, the CEO asks him to check Wu Yan's shoulder in case he might have drooled on it while he was asleep which makes Insoab burn red with embarrassment. He worriedly takes a tissue out, ready to correct his mistake. Wu Yan tells him that the CEO was just teasing him. The CEO confirms this with his silly laugh, 
saying that it isn't even possible to drool on Wuyan in any case. Wuyan thinks that it will not be a good idea to discuss what happened in front of the old men, in case it will make Insoab uncomfortable. So he grabs a notebook and writes on it before passing it to Insoab. He wrote that he didn't discuss anything that happened earlier with anyone and wants to know if Insoab wants that too. Insoab glances towards him and nods in a silent plea, only hoping that you will understand what turmoil he had been through, going through something like that. The CEO chimes in, mentioning some Chinese people who got on his nerves earlier, to which Mr. Cha agrees. He sighs and mentions how people like those are present everywhere that you go nowadays. Insoab is clueless as to what they are talking about. Did something happen while he was sleeping? He pipes in and asks the old men what they are talking about. The CEO turns around and explains begrudgingly that they almost got in an accident when some crazy people stopped short in front of them out of nowhere. And not just that, they even dared to throw a cigarette butt on his car. They have no freaking idea how expensive the tint on the windows of this car is, those sickos. You'd think that they would leave after that, but no. They even rolled down their windows and started cussing in Chinese. They were completely deranged. While the CEO was still in his fit of rage about his expensive car, Inso Ab worries about some even worse possibilities. Were they the same guys from the restroom? Only one person could have answered that, so he looks at Wu Yan meaningfully. And sure enough, Wu Yan can understand. He grabs the notebook once again and writes that a minor incident happened while he was asleep, but is nothing to worry about since they won't be seeing those guys again. Inso Ab takes a minute to make sense of it and then asks for the pen. He then writes that he is sorry for all the trouble that Wu Yan has to go through because of him. He never wanted to get him involved in something so inconvenient. Inconvenient may be putting it lightly, but now that he is thinking, it is a downright humiliating experience. The weirdest thing of all was that when Wu Yan entered the restroom, the first thought that came to Inso Ab's mind wasn't even that he was saved. Instead, he thought that dying was better than this. Wu Yan was risking himself to save him, but instead of feeling relieved, he felt more anxious. He should have been more careful. But regardless, Wu Yan did save him, and he needs to thank him for it. But as soon as he opens his mouth, Mr. Cha announces that they have arrived. The villa is majestic, and the CEO rightfully looks proud of it. He asks Inso Ab what he thinks of the place and whether he likes the view, to which Inso Ab promptly agrees. The CEO isn't satisfied with this robot-like answer, so he asks Inso Ab to describe it in a better manner. Inso Ab then smiles and tells him that the villa is super duper, mega awesome. A silence falls after that. Inso Ab looks at everyone all confused, thinking if he said something wrong again, and the CEO burst out laughing and explains that his description was too funny to not laugh at. Both the old men then go on to take out the luggage, and when Inso Ab insists on helping them, they ask him to rest since he hasn't been feeling well since earlier. So this is the excuse that Wu Yan had made to handle the situation. Inso Ab laughs it off and tells them that he is fine now. He is tapped on his shoulder as he is about to take one of the bags out. Wu Yan is here. He pats his back and tells him it is fine and he can rest inside. He looks calm and caring with his beautiful smile and kind words, but his words are like a heavy weight on Inso Ab's mind. It is as if he can read those sinister thoughts behind this facade, as if Wu Yan is in on his weakness now. The villa is shining from the inside too. It is completely spick and span even though nobody was living in it. The CEO explains that a caretaker was called in a few days ahead to take care of everything. He asks Insoab's opinion on it once again. Insoab once again agrees promptly. The CEO then discloses that he lived nearby in Gangwondo for a month when the villa was being built because apparently, you need to be on your contractor's case all the time and keep an eye on them if you want to get work done quickly and properly. Mr. Cha recalls what a difficult time it was since the CEO never showed up to the office because he was so obsessed with this villa. The CEO took offense to that. He points out that he still approved all the required paperwork at the time, to which Mr. Cha rebuts that he only gave a thumbs up and it was actually him who signed those papers off with his signature nonetheless. The CEO is raging once again. He reminds Mr. Cha of the hefty bonus he received for his efforts at the time, but Mr. Cha claims that what he received was hardly something to be called a bonus in the first place. They could have gone for hours in the end, but a hearty laugh broke their face off immediately. It is an unusual scene. Insoab is laughing at their banter. He smiles and points out that both of them look very friendly like this. The CEO isn't ready to give up just yet, though. He sits on the sofa next to Insoab and claims that it is not friendship, but the goodness of his heart that he is bringing his old road manager along despite him being a boner. 
Mr. Cha isn't going to remain silent at such a jab either. He menacingly asks the CEO whether he shall reveal his old wild days to the kids here, after which they surely will not listen to a word that he has to say. This is bad news for the CEO. He asks Mr. Cha not to bring up the old days now and pipe it down. But Mr. Cha is already on the path of revenge. He grabs Insoab by the shoulder and a whisper advises him that it is always good to know one or two weaknesses of the stars that he works with. It is something that could make him a fortune later on. The CEO can overhear the sick plan that was being discussed. He loudly expresses his disappointment in Mr. Cha for encouraging Insoab to go swooping in on his weakness. A smooth voice is heard claiming that he has no weaknesses. Wu Yan is standing in front of them with a wide grin. All the three men stand alert in silence. They have no idea when he came in. Mr. Cha quickly realizes the situation and whispers to Insoab that he is talking about the other celebrities he might work with in the future. He looks at Wu Yan nervously and emphasizes that he really doesn't have any weaknesses. Not even one. Not catching the drift, Insoab innocently replies that he isn't planning to be anyone else's manager either way. So it is a moot point, but this revelation is enough to shock everyone in the room. Insoab gets worried, thinking that he has revealed something that he isn't supposed to, but contrary to his worries, laughter roars in the room once again. Even Wu Yan is laughing hard. Once everyone has calmed down, the CEO teasingly asks Insoab whether he should finally make him the president of Wu Yan's fan club. Embarrassed once again, Insoab just responds that he's okay. Wu Yan gets up suddenly, surprising everyone and informs everyone that he is going to take a shower. The way this guy changes expressions and moods so effortlessly is mind-boggling. The CEO asks him to use the second-floor bathroom. Once they make sure that he is gone, the CEO turns to Insoab and asks him if something has happened between Wu Yan and those Chinese guys earlier. Insoab gets worried once again and asks him if anything happened while he was sleeping. The CEO waves his concern and explains that he just wants to know because those guys tried to pick a fight earlier out of nowhere. It is nothing to worry about. Insoab looks down deep in thought. The CEO might have asked Insoab not to worry about it, but inside his mind, he's going bonkers thinking about what happened. How can he not worry about it after what actually happened? When those Chinese perps stopped suddenly in front of their car, he lost his cool immediately and started cussing them out. They too were doing the same flipping birds and all. But things went bananas when Wu Yan picked up a spanner lying in the back, opened a window, and did the most insane thing ever. What exactly was he thinking, this son of a gun? The car hit the curb, and it happened because the spanner was embedded in the window right in front of the driver's seat. It was sheer luck that the spanner had stopped right there and didn't hit the driver given the force with which it was thrown. The CEO turned around and looked at Wu Yan in utter disbelief, asking him if he had lost his mind. He, on the contrary, looked as calm as ever, not like someone who had just caused an accident a few moments ago. He looked at the CEO then and shushed in with a finger on those smooth lips of his. Presently, when Wu Yun comes down after a relaxing shower, he finds that Insoab is sitting alone in the living room. Upon inquiring, he finds out that the older men had gone to get groceries. He wipes his wet hair with a towel, looking all divine while doing it, and takes his seat beside Insoab. The proximity between them instantly starts to make Insoab nervous. A slight movement can make their shoulders touch, and he isn't sure if he can handle such a thing. After the unfortunate incident today, he feels even more on edge than usual whenever he is alone with Wu Yan. But he knows that he needs to address the situation sooner or later, so he musters up some courage to finally speak. But he has to hold his thoughts when Wu Yan looks at him and asks him if he is doing okay. He even points out how uncomfortable Insoab looks, as if he is having some sort of ailment. An ailment might not have been completely accurate, but isn't too far from reality either. Incidents like today that affected him both physically and mentally are bad news for his already weak heart. He knows that he shouldn't push himself too hard, but some things are just not in his control. Wu Yan grabs a cigarette which catches Insoab's attention. He did not know that Wu Yan smokes. He lits the cigarette calmly and explains to Insoab that as an actor, you are bound to smoke once in a while. So B2 is used to doing it now and then. The smoke is making Insoab cough, for which he apologizes, but Insoab responds that it is okay. He then gets up with the cigarette still hanging from his mouth and goes out to the balcony. Insoab stands in silence in the living room, admiring the view that he has in front of him. Those majestic quarterback shoulders that Jenny was so obsessed about that she could have written an entire novel about them. There definitely is something to it, because whenever Insoab isn't paying attention, 
His eyes immediately follow them as if they have their own will. Wu Yan is saying something about how relaxing smoking now and then is, but Insoab feels like he is still lost in the past. Suddenly, something comes to his mind and he asks Wu Yan in a quiet voice what sports he played. He knows that asking something like this is all too sudden, but he wants to know if speaking of the past is enough to put a tiny dent in someone as invincible as him. Someone who lives his life like the past doesn't even matter to him. Hearing the question out of the blue, Wu Yan whips his head sharply, but he is back to his smiling self again and responds that he used to play just this and that like everybody else. Quite frankly, he is taken aback by the question because Inso Ab isn't someone who ever crosses the boundaries and asking something personal about his past like that is not his ordinary behavior. He goes to him and asks him to go back and rest. He then touches his cheek and tells him that he feels a little feverish too. When a wide-eyed Insoab keeps looking at him in amazement, he adds that he should forget about what happened earlier and think of it as nothing more than getting bit by a rabid dog. Looking at his droopy shoulders and sad face, Wu Yan is reminded of all the things that he is taught not to do. Not enjoying other people's sorrows, sadness, misery, and pain and respecting their feelings. But since he is incapable of comprehending the reason why he needs to do so, he just memorizes it as a social rule and keeps adhering to it to live a good life. But sometimes, he feels a sudden urge to break all those rules. He is amazed at how Insoab sticks to him no matter what even though he hates him so much. He isn't crying now, but his expression is no different than earlier when he was getting tormented by those leeches in the bathroom stalls. He once again asks Insoab to go take some rest. Looking at him now, it is a wonder how those sickos were willing to go to such lengths just because this guy here turned them on. It is ridiculous to even think about it and Wu Yan never wants to witness something like that again. The sun's about to set and the sizzling sound of the meat in the barbecue is heard in the backyard. The CEO is gushing about what a luxury it is to have BBQ in the open fresh air, to which Mr. Cha points out that it is a luxury only to him because he is made to grill the meat for him instead. The CEO playfully responds that he has no right to complain even if he has to grill his meat all his life because he had lost the fishing bet last time. Mr. Cha is ready with another jab. He claims that he only lost the bet because the CEO had cheated last time. He accuses the CEO of moving his fishing pole when he went for a bathroom break. There was no one else besides them, so it definitely was him who did it. Insoab sits there listening to their banter, but somehow he ends up becoming the referee in their verbal battle. Mr. Cha assures Insoab that he is going to see who is the loser today because the CEO only wins if he messes with his gear. Insoab agrees to it happily, which somehow offends the CEO. He pouts and says that Soab taking Mr. Cha's side hurts him a lot. He repeats the nickname twice and admits that it is something that comes out more naturally. The CEO is very happy with what he has cooked with Insoab's name and decides that he is going to call him Soab from now on. When Insoab just looks at him in bafflement, he asks him if he doesn't like it. It surely is more catchy and fun to say. The problem isn't that the name isn't to Insoab's liking. What more so that getting a nickname now feels like his plans are going to get deterred somehow. After all, he is someone who is here just for the next three months, and with the way Wu Yan has been with him this morning, he isn't sure what the future holds. The banter between the men brings him back to reality when Mr. Cha makes a disgusted face and asks the CEO to take a hint about the nickname. The CEO is adamant that it is a nice name and reminds Mr. Cha how he hated his nickname initially but gradually, he too embraced it and started using it everywhere. Mr. Cha is so done with the nonsense that he is spouting that he grabs a perilla leaf with some grilled meat and shoves it in the CEO's mouth, urging him to eat. Wu Yan chuckles at them and comments that they look just like a married couple. The CEO immediately jeers at him, asking not to say something like that. Wu Yan smiles and says that Mr. Kim, the CEO, is a childish husband, whereas Mr. Cha is like the wife who nags her husband incessantly but still follows whatever he says. The funny imagery incites a hearty laugh from Insoab too. This time, instead of getting angry, the CEO laughs too and states that they did have a wife in between as a matter of fact, so it isn't exactly a far-off guess. Insoab isn't able to wrap his head around what a wife in between means, so he asks the CEO. The CEO then reveals that his second wife married Mr. Cha, and despite his best efforts to warn him, he just didn't listen to him. And now he is wasting all his hard-earned money on alimony. The CEO looks all too smug while explaining the struggles of Mr. Cha with his broken marriage. Mr. Cha can't take it. He asks the CEO why he is trying to dig up old wounds, but he smugly responds that he is just stating the facts. 
He then looks at Wu Yan and advises him that if he wants his manager to stay loyal to him, he must also make sure that his manager marries his second wife, because as soon as they divorced, the manager would devote his life completely to him. Mr. Cha could only muster up a fake laugh at the stupid joke that the CEO was making at his expense. Wu Yan has a different mindset, though. He says that he didn't like to share his things. There's a saying that is on the tip of his tongue for this kind of thing, but he isn't able to recall what, but Insoab knows what he is referring to. He immediately chimes in and mentions Eskimo Brothers, his eyebrows still pinched in doubt. An immediate silence falls around the table. Both the older men could do nothing but call out Insoab with their trembling voices. Insoab thinks that he messed up once again, despite having memorized an entire page of slangs, but Wu Yang's hearty laughter and assurance that he isn't exactly wrong brings him relief. He adds that Pillow Brothers will be a more accurate term in this case, which makes Insoab embarrassed somehow. He apologizes immediately. Wu Yan looks at his blushing face and asks him where he came across something like this. When Insoab says that he had learned it online, the CEO comments that the internet is corrupting children's minds these days. Insoab isn't too happy to hear that and his shoulders slump in disappointment. But just then, he hears the barking noises. It is none other than Happy running towards them at full speed. With its fluffy tail and shiny blue eyes, the cute doggo bounds towards Insoab and sits right in front of him, with his tail wagging enthusiastically. But who is he? Insoab asks the CEO whose dog it is. The CEO informs him that it is the neighbor's dog and seeing how friendly he is, this guy surely remembers them. Looking at the dog though reminds Insoab of Will, and he wonders how he is doing back at home. His sad expression gives the wrong idea to the CEO, and he asks Insoab if he hates dogs. He assures him that this little buddy here didn't bite anyone. Insoab clarifies to him that this isn't the case. Relieved by his answer, the CEO urges Insoab to pet the enthusiastic dog or his tail is going to fall off. Insoab looks at the dog and notices his glittering eyes, wet snout, and soft, fluffy fur. He looks so lovely that Insoab has a sudden urge to hug him tight. When he reaches out his hand towards him, the doggo immediately places a paw on it without a moment's hesitation. This elicits a boisterous laugh from the CEO and a hearty chuckle from Insoab too. The CEO then advises Insoab to laugh more often like that. When Insoab turns and looks at him quizzically, the CEO explains that it bothers him and Mr. Cha that he looks so sad and depressed all the time, when a young guy like him should be able to express his feelings in a better way. Mr. Cha quickly clarifies that his worries are more of a different kind, but he wants him to be more expressive nonetheless. The CEO assures him that he could be more open with him. It is not like they are bad people after all. Mr. Cha adds that they might not have been that good. Surely Wu Yan wasn't, but the last thought he just keeps inside his mind. Insoab looks down and thanks them for worrying about him. In the past, Peter wasn't like this. He was a boy who had as many expressions as numerous flowers blooming on a spring day, crying when he was sad, laughing out loud when he was happy, but the Choi Insoab of the present cannot afford to do that. The CEO suggests that Soab should take Happy back to the neighbors since he is stuck to his side with his tail wagging. Insoab doesn't know why he is required to do that, but the CEO adds that Happy's owner is an elderly person for whom getting around is a little difficult. They get worried when Happy is gone for too long, so it is best to save them the trouble of coming all the way here to get the doggo. Insoab happily obliges and grabs hold of Happy's lease, and off they go back to his place. Happy looks extremely delighted to walk with Insoab, and he keeps leading him on, wiggling his backside and wagging his tail in excitement. The scene reminds Insoab of the walks he used to take with Will, and he starts missing him terribly. The thought of Will, his mom, and his dad is making him homesick, and it is becoming unbearable for him. He stops walking and crouches down in front of Happy, before swooping him in for a tight hug and sobbing silently, while calling Will's name. He hates the fact that he has to act a certain way and hold his emotions when everyone around is being so nice to him. Happy is trying to soothe him by licking his tears, and so he apologizes to the doggo and hugs him once again. But Insoab immediately had to stop crying when someone came toward them and asked him if he was crying. It is none other than Wu Yan, who demands to know why he is holding a dog and crying like this. Insoab tries to regain his composure and come up with an excuse, but Wu Yan is now right in front of his face, asking him once again why he is crying. There is no time to think of anything else, so Insoab responds that he isn't feeling good. Wu Yan is surprised to hear that he still isn't feeling better. With a smug smile on his face, he suggests if that is the case, 
he should go inside and rest instead of sitting here and crying while hugging a dog. Inso Ab stands up and apologizes for the inconvenience, but Wu Yan pats his shoulders and tells him that there is nothing to be sorry about, because it isn't him, but he himself was the one who is hurting here. Inso Ab still has to take Happy back, but Wu Yan tells him that he is going to take care of it, so he should just go and rest. Inso Ab tries to refuse, but something in Wu Yan's eyes and how sternly he is demanding him to go back and rest makes him stop. Inso Ab wonders for how long he has been looking at him with that kind of face. Back in the living room, Inso Ab is apologizing to the CEO and Mr. Cha. They have come all this way and now his health isn't allowing him to accompany them for fishing. The CEO asks him not to apologize, but instead, he is sorry for forcing him to join them without knowing that he isn't well. Inso Ab quickly clarifies that he came here because he wanted to, but unfortunately, things didn't go according to plan. He truly is sorry for it. He isn't feeling all too well about lying and pretending to be sick after being caught earlier. But now that he has done already, he has no other option but to play along. The CEO looks at Wu Yan next with an uninterested look and asks him whether he isn't going to join them too. Wu Yan confirms that he has no intention of catching a cold because of the chilly weather outside. The response is weird because Wu Yan isn't someone who catches a cold easily anyway. But he explains that anything could happen in the future, and if his work is hampered because of falling sick, it wouldn't do any good. He asks the CEO not to worry about them and to enjoy his time fishing. The CEO responds that his saying that makes him worry about them even more. Wu Yan chuckles at his response and asks him to leave already. To Insoab, he asks him to rest well with an alluring smile. Once he leaves, Insoab takes a sigh of relief. Insoab lays down on his bed, but sleep evades him. On nights when he couldn't sleep, he was used to imagining all sorts of stuff. Today, he is thinking about his home back in America, his mother's delicious cinnamon cookies, Will's enthusiastic barks and his dad goofing around on the piano. He is thinking about his siblings running all around the house and his mom calling him so endearingly. These thoughts and memories make Insoab very homesick and tears start to stream freely down his eyes despite his best efforts to stop them. He finally sits up and wonders why he can't be happy even in his daydreams. He gazes outside the glass paned doors of the balcony and decides to step outside. It is quite different here in the hustle and bustle of Seoul. All this calmness and quiet makes him admit that he is very lonely, and saying it out loud makes it feel even more real. He tries to hold back his tears once more while repeating to himself that he isn't lonely, he has a wonderful job and he really likes it. He likes what he is doing. He loves his job. He keeps repeating it over and over again as if trying to engrave these words on his brain. A blanket flops on his back and he looks back in surprise. Wu Yan is here with his alluring smile. He teasingly asks Insoab what he loves. Is it him? Insoab just looks at him in utter bewilderment. He grabs his shoulder and asks him what he is doing here out in the cold. Given that he is already sick, this isn't a good idea. Insoab mumbles that he is just out for a walk. Wu Yan takes a seat beside him and gestures towards the blanket, saying that he will catch a cold if he stays out there. Insoab thanks him for his kindness. They both sit quietly, admiring the night sky. A moment later, while releasing a puff of smoke, Wu Yan comments on how quiet it is and how the stars are shining so brightly. Insoab agrees with him, but deep inside, he is going through turmoil. Being alone with Wu Yan isn't easy on his nerves. He guesses that he is going to stay out until he is done smoking, so how shall he leave without making it weird? But his thoughts come to a halt when Wu Yan calls him. By his full name this time, he looks at Insoab, takes a deep sigh, and asks him why he is doing this. Insoab could only look at him quizzically. He asks him once again, more sternly this time, why he is doing all of this. Insoab is nervous now. He is not sure what he is supposed to say. But while he is still racking his brain thinking about how to respond, Wu Yan interrupts him. He tells him that ever since he was a kid, it was difficult for him to understand why people acted a certain way. He admits that he has a vague idea now that he is older, but figuring out Insoab is still difficult for him. Insoab tries to hide his anxiousness by looking down and responds that he is just a mere manager, but Wu Yan is quiet. A moment passes before he suddenly starts laughing out of nowhere, saying that he is right. He indeed is his manager. And then he asks Insoab what he wants, because he is sure that Insoab wants something from him. Insoab is still not saying anything, so Wu Yan tells him that if he tells him what he wants right now, he will be willing to hear him out, but he only has the next five seconds to do so. No more playing games, no more confusing him with those innocent-looking eyes. Moving his hand swiftly through his hair, 
Wu Yan smiles and tells Insoab that if he tells him what he wants now, he is willing to listen to him. But when his sharp eyes meet with Insoab once again, he immediately understands that this isn't a favor of any sort. The menacing look brings chills to Insoab's back. Insoab is still trying to understand if this is some kind of sick joke, but when he hears the counting, he knows that he needs to answer. As Wu Yan's countdown is just about to end, Insoab looks at him and says that he would like to know his weakness. He himself is caught off guard by his sudden burst of bravery in asking something so alarming. But, oh well, what's done is done. Wu Yan is calm. He takes another swig of his cigarette and confirms Insoab's question. His calm demeanor is even more frightening than his questioning why he needed to know that. So Insoab just waves his hand and tells him that it's completely okay if he doesn't want to reveal it to him. Surprisingly, Wu Yan comes closer to him and asks in a whisper if he really will be fine not knowing it. When Insoab doesn't answer for a moment, he stands back up and tells him if that's the case. He better not reveal it then. But this is not what Insoab wants. He can't believe that even though the opportunity is served on a platter to him, he is still messing it up somehow. If this keeps happening, he will never know Li Wu Yan's weakness. He needs to push himself this time because the person himself is willing to reveal it. If he didn't ask now, he might never get a chance again. And so, in his hurry to stop him from leaving, he musters all this courage and grabs Wu Yan's arm, pleading with him to tell him. When desperate, he really does things that he would never otherwise do. Wu Yan looks back at him. Once Insoab is seated again, he agrees to tell him his weakness. Hearing this, Insoab's demeanor changes completely and Wu Yan couldn't help but notice it. He thought Insoab looked quite young even in a suit, but looking at him now, he looks even younger, like a boy with cheering bright eyes. After a moment's pause, Wu Yan admits that this is something that he has never revealed to anyone, but his weakness is that he can't swim. During school, he always used to skip whenever there was a swimming class. Even though he is good at all other sports, swimming is something that he never got a hold of. Insoab listens to him attentively. Wu Yan asks him what he is planning to do with it. Now that he knows his weakness, Insoab is not able to understand what he means by it and looks at him quizzically. Wu Yan clarifies that he thought that he was going to use his weakness in some way, which is why he asked. Isn't he planning to sell it to the tabloids or something? Insoab promptly denies the claim. Wu Yan asks him why he asked about it. He is excited to know what this guy will come up with this time. Insoab looks down and admits that he just wants to know everything about him, and that includes his weaknesses too. If he knows his weaknesses, then maybe he can be of help to him one day. Wu Yan looks at him and asks him if all of this is because he is his manager. Insoab promptly agrees, but even to his own ears. It sounds like nothing but a lousy excuse. Wu Yan laughs loudly at the silly and very uncomfortable expression that Insoab is making and Insoab could do nothing but look at him with those childlike glittering eyes. Once his laughter subsides, Wu Yan turns around and walks towards the edge of the lake. The full moon in the quiet night sky and Wu Yan's majestic frame are a sight to behold. Insoab unconsciously raises his hand, trying to get closer and touch him once again, but suddenly Wu Yan turns around and asks him if he's going to push him. Insoab is broken out of reverie and he raises both his hands as if in defense. Wu Yan suggests that if he truly is sticking to him because of some kind of resentment against him, now is the best time to take revenge on him. Insoab tries to deny the idea immediately, but he doesn't get a response, which makes him more anxious with each passing moment. Just when he thinks that his cover is blown for good, Wu Yan once again chuckles and tells him that he was just joking. Insoab finally releases the breath he was holding on to, but this doesn't escape Wu Yan's notice. Are these lame excuses his best efforts to trick him? If that is it, he really needs to work more on it. Nobody is going to believe him with such juvenile tricks, is what Wu Yan wants to tell him. This is something that he has never felt before. He looks at Insoab and smiles, but before he can finish what he's about to say, Something hits him on the back of his head. Insoab gasps, and all he can see now is red. He calls out Wu Yan's name, but he cannot hear him. Wu Yan grabs his throbbing head and tries to find his footing again, but everything is blurry. One of the assailants notices Wu Yan hunched over and hits him once again. Wu Yan could hear them talking amongst themselves. It's those Chinese perps again. He looks at them and realizes that it was a mistake just hitting their car instead of them. Once his vision somewhat clears out, he staggers toward one of them and lands a big punch on his face. This just turned into a full-fledged fight. The other guy with the cudgel hits him once again. Insoab stands there watching, but he needs to do something. He grabs hold of the guy's shirt and asks him to stop before he can hurt Wu Yan anymore. The guy looks back at him all annoyed, but Insoab 
doesn't let him go. Tears stream down his eyes and he begs the guy to stop. But the guy isn't here for him right now. He smacks Inso Ab and tells him to F off. All it takes is a smack and Inso Ab is on all of his fours. Wu Yan looks at him and decides that next time he will hire somebody who can at least defend him. He will not require any defending in any case, but because he is injured now, he can't do much. Normally, he would have taken care of them by now. He finally gathers all of his energy and stands back up, only to find that the guy who bludgeoned him, running toward him with full force. Wu Yan remembers his face. Is he the same guy whose Mickey he crushed in the restroom earlier? The guy shouts that he is going to kill him and plunges headlong toward him. Wu Yan's foot slips, and it takes him a moment to understand what has happened. A loud splash is heard. Those guys suddenly got into the car and left, chuckling amongst themselves about something. Finally, Insoab fumbles a little and gets up to his feet, glancing around for Wu Yan. He runs towards the lake looking for him, but he is nowhere to be seen. He shouts his name loudly, but there is no response. When even after shouting his name multiple times and looking for him in all directions, there is no sign of him, a sudden realization strikes Insoab. This could only mean one thing. Wu Yan has drowned. He was now beneath the surface of this lake, in its icy cold water. He was finally gone. This is exactly what Insoab wanted. This is what Jenny would have wanted. That piece of jerk had it coming. Insoab can't help but laugh at how things have turned out. But why is he calling for help? Why is he not able to control his tears? Just why in the world does this feel so wrong? This is not how he wanted to take his revenge for Jenny. He starts shouting for help even louder, hoping for someone to come quickly and help him save Wu Yan. But it is useless. The neighbors are too far away to hear him and time was of the essence here. If he wastes any more time hoping for help, it will be too late and cannot let that happen. He cannot let him go. Not like this. Not so soon. He quickly gets up and dashes forward with only one goal in mind. When Wu Yan opens his eyes, he finds himself in a brightly lit room, his head throbbing due to the ruckus the CEO is making. He asks him where he is and the CEO informs him that he is in the hospital. As soon as his eyes meet the CEO's, he starts nagging him about how scared he has been after receiving a call from the police confirming if they knew him. Wu Yan responds to him saying that he surely might have thought that he had killed someone. The CEO didn't correct him on his jab this time. He is right after all. While fishing, when he suddenly received the call, he thought that this was it. This jerk had finally done it all. But surprisingly, the police informed them that both he and Insoab were hurt and were taken to the hospital. And it was Li Wu Yan who had a severe head injury. Now back in the hospital, it is evident how painful it is for Wu Yan. He is visibly wincing from the pain. Wu Yan can feel the throbbing in his chest area. It seems like he had a broken rib too. The CEO sighs and expresses his relief that the injury isn't that severe, and it isn't as devastating as he thought initially. Wu Yan asks them if the culprits have been caught, to which Mr. Cha informs them that those people are itinerant workers. They have shared their descriptions and details about their car with the police, but all they have managed to find till now is just an abandoned car. A fingerprint identification is also useless since those people are here illegally. This isn't what he wants to hear. The info makes Wu Yan see even though he is hurting. He asks Mr. Cha to notify them to devise an alternative promptly. The CEO tries to calm him down saying that the police surely are going to catch them, but this aggravates him even more. Wu Yan yells at them, suggesting that all the police do is warm their seats and get paid for it. This was an attempt on his life. Isn't arresting those pieces of trash their primary job? The CEO glances around quickly to make sure nobody overhears him and then calmly tells Wu Yan that it is a consequence of his own actions. He shouldn't have hurled the wrench like that, but the glare he receives at the suggestion is enough to silence him from speaking any further. He and Mr. Cha can feel the sweat on their backs. Wu Yan agrees, though. He says that it was indeed a mistake to hurl the wrench on the window and not directly at them. He should have aimed right at their heads in the beginning. Then something like this would have never happened. Wu Yan smiles while suggesting this, and once again the CEO and Mr. Cha could feel the creeps. A few moments later, Wu Yan asks the CEO if his test results are back. The CEO affirms it, explaining that he has a fractured shoulder and a rib, but everything else is fine. And what's important now is for him to rest and make a full recovery, even if it means that they have to push back his filming schedule. The CEO expresses his relief once again that these are the only inconveniences that they had, given how hurt Wu Yan is and how Insoab jumped into the freezing lake to save him. He recalls how scared he was when he got to know that both of them were being rushed to the hospital. 
But Wu Yan wasn't listening anymore. The CEO finds that he is up from his bed and ready to leave. When he asks him where he is going, Wu Yan responds with a question, asking him for the location. The CEO asks him if he is asking about the location of those criminal jerks or the police, and Wu Yan tells him that he isn't asking for them, but Insoab. This is weird. Thinking about others and being polite in situations like these is far beyond him. So why is this jerk asking for him? Has he completely lost it after taking an injury to the head? Just to check, the CEO asks him if he knows his name, and Wu Yan answers correctly. He then asks him if he knows Mr. Cha's name, but this time too, he is right. Wu Yan is done with these inane questions. He takes out the IV drips and tells them that if they want to test if he is of sound mind or not, he isn't in the mood for it. He is ready to leave despite the CEO asking him to rest since he is injured. The CEO tries to stop him once more, saying that it's no use going to Insoab now since he was in the ICU, but this makes Wu Yan more determined. He is out of the room before the CEO can finish. Once he reaches the intensive care unit, a nurse tries to stop him from going further. He asks her if she knows where the patient named Choi Insoab is, but his head starts to throb severely. It feels like someone is still beating on his head with a jackhammer. The nurse tries to look for the requested information while Wu Yan tries to regain his composure, still holding his throbbing head. When the CEO finally catches up to him, he finds Wu Yan standing in front of the reception desk, clutching his head and looking no less than a crazed patient. He apologizes to the nurse for the inconvenience and guides him to a corner. He scolds Wu Yan for running before letting him finish and lets him know that Insoab isn't in the IQ now. He was here since his condition wasn't good initially, but once he became better, he was moved to a normal room. When did all of this happen? Wu Yan wonders how long he was out. As if on cue, the CEO points at him and yells that he has been asleep for half a day. Wu Yan asks him where Insoab is now, so the CEO tells him that he is in the room right next to his. When Wu Yan comes back, he finds Mr. Cha seated in his room. He asks him to leave. When Mr. Cha asks him if he is doing okay, Wu Yan tells him that since he is not in his best condition right now, he wouldn't like to repeat himself. He once again requests him to leave. Mr. Cha is still confused, but the CEO is there to save him from an impending doom and drags him outside immediately. Wu Yan takes a look at Insoab. He is lying on the hospital bed, looking very peaceful. But Wu Yan's mind is the exact opposite. Why did he save him? Wu Yan looks at Insoab. He saved him. With his scrawny, unpleasing body, he jumped into the cold water to save him. If he hated him so much, then he should have just stood there and watched him sink to the bottom of the lake. Then why? Why did he save him? He moves the hospital gown and looks at the big scar running down from the top of his chest. This only assures him that he wasn't imagining things. What he did today could have killed him. But as always, it is yet another surprising thing that he has done. It isn't something that a normal person would do, and his head throbs the more he thinks about it. He wanted to set clear boundaries. He needed to find out why he did it. If he finds out the reason, will he be free of this unfamiliar feeling? While Wu Yan is battling this dilemma mentally, Insoab opens his eyes. And when he finds Wu Yan there, the first thing he asks is if he is okay. Here is he, lying in a state worse than his, and he is still worrying about him. Insoab tries to say something, but his voice is very weak and Wu Yan misses it. Insoab repeats once again, stating that he isn't going to push him. He tries to say something else too, but before he can finish, he once again drifts into unconsciousness. Yes, he could always ask him after he is fully awake. Thinking this, Wu Yan takes a seat in a nearby chair with a huge sigh. His head continues to throb painfully. Back to work after recuperating for a while, when Insoab turns on the radio, Another news about Wu Yan's car accident is on it. The jockey details how fans have stated their concerns about his injuries, due to which the TV series that he is supposed to shoot is halted. He is back to work after a break of three days. Wu Yan encouraged him to take an off as a small compensation for saving his life. He proposed this with his usual charming smile, stating that if he couldn't provide this much in return for saving his life, he might as well have drowned. Even CEO Kim and Mr. Cha are worried for him so wants to call and thank them, but then decides against it. Today is an important day. Today is the read-through day for the upcoming TV series that was pushed back due to Wu Yan's injury, and the CEO had advised him to take utmost care since this will also be the first meeting after Kang Youngmo was cast as a lead in the drama. Inso Ab did his research and found a few concerning things, but they are not the problem today. What worries him more is facing Wu Yan once again. When he was back in the hospital, 
Wu Yan's behavior had puzzled him. He would continuously come to his room and make meaningless small talk, which was so unlike him. In so Ab thought that he was just trying to keep him company, but the most bizarre thing happened during the night. A few nights ago, when he woke, he found Wu Yan standing by his bed, staring at him with a solemn look, completely unfazed. When Inso Ab asked him what was going on, he simply smiled and responded that he also wanted to know the same. And this wasn't even a one-time thing. It happened for the next three nights straight. Now in the garage, Inso Ab fiddles with his phone, trying to muster the courage to call him and let him know that he has arrived. But his effort is for naught, because Wu Yan is already here, getting in the backseat with a huge smile on his face. When he catches the horror on Inso Ab's face, he apologizes to him for startling him. He then asks how he is feeling. Inso Ab thanks him and tells him that because of his generosity, he is feeling much better now. Wu Yan scoffs at this and tells him that it is he who should be thankful since he saved his life. Inso Ab tries to refute it, but Wu Yan cuts him off saying that this is something that they have already discussed before and there is no need to refute it again. Inso Ab feels relieved that he at least does not have to face him now since he is at the wheel. This is also unusual because Wu Yan never talks to him when he is driving. While Inso Ab is still contemplating this behavior change, Wu Yan once again calls him from the back seat, asking if he has eaten. Inso Ab's mind is befuddled. Something is surely going on. Why is Wu Yan asking all of this? Is there a hidden meaning behind this? When there is no response, Wu Yan asks him again. Inso Ab laughs awkwardly and tells him that he had a little something earlier. Wu Yan tells him that it isn't enough since Inso Ab still has to recover, to which Inso Ab responds that he is perfectly fine. Wu Yan chuckles at his stern response and suggests that they should go eat something because they still have an hour to spare before the red through. He insists saying that he is hungry and Inso Ab could do nothing but oblige. He asks Inso Ab what he likes to eat. At this point, Inso Ab had to give up analyzing the change in his behavior and go with the flow. He responds that he is okay with anything but spicy food. Wu Yan chuckles and tells him that he knows exactly where to go. Wu Yan suggests surd fried octopus. Inso Ab glances at the menu and sighs mentally because everything on it is spicy. Wu Yan looks at him and assures him that spicy food is good for relieving stress, so he should eat some and relax. Inso Ab agrees, even though this is nothing but a bad idea. All of this is very alarming. Wu Yan being too friendly with him was putting him on edge. Inso Ab tries to figure out if he is doing all of this to teach him a lesson. Did he do something wrong? Does he know? But that isn't possible because nobody was there. Thinking about it again made Inso Ab's ears turn red. Wu Yan notices it and asks him what he is thinking about. He adds that he is asking because Inso Ab looks deep in thought as if there is a lot on his mind. Inso Ab quickly apologizes and assures him that he won't get lost in his thoughts again. It was ridiculous and also not something Wu Yan wanted to hear. Where was he learning these phrases from? Wu Yan assures him that there is no need to do that and he simply asks because he is curious. Even though in reality he wants to crack open his head and see what he has been cooking inside. But this thought, he keeps to himself. Inso Ab informs him that he isn't thinking about anything in particular. Wu Yan brushes it off but he can't shake the feeling that since his manager saved him from his doom at the lake that day, he also became the most significant mystery in his life. The food was served and its looks and aroma ensure that everything it touched was going to be set on fire. Inso Ab says a prayer asking God to not forsake him while he goes through this trial and digs in, but just one bite is enough to elicit violent coughs out of him. Wu Yan asks him if the food is spicy. Amidst his cough, Inso Ab manages to squeak a yes, to which Wu Yan responds that it is only spicy in the beginning and it will even out the more he eats it, so he wants him to continue eating. This is a complete nightmare for Inso Ab. Wu Yan guesses that he must be stressed due to the incidents that happened during the trip, but Inso Ab refuses. It falls on deaf ears because Wu Yan insists that Inso Ab should eat some more to relieve his stress. Inso Ab agrees, but all the while he eats, he keeps on coughing violently. At this point, he is rubbing his face, and tears stream from his eyes. But he continues to eat still. This is all too intriguing for Wu Yan. Usually when a fly irritates you, you either shoot away or kill it. But this fly here was making him more curious with every passing minute. But anyway, this is his thanks to this fly for the severe headache that he had to go through for the past few days. He passes one more piece to Inso Ab with a huge smile and asks him to eat up. Inso Ab thanks him and continues to eat, even though he feels like dying. He knows about Korean hospitality and is aware that it is impolite to refuse. But if this right now is what this hospitality means, then maybe poison is way better. Wu Yan continues to fill Inso Ab's plate with several other pieces. 
He thinks how funny it is to see a man cry like this just by eating stirred fried octopus. They finally arrive for the reading, and Wu Yan greets everyone with his pleasing smile, also apologizing for being a bit late. People surround him immediately, asking about his health and how he has been doing. Inso Ab notices how easy it is for him to sway the emotions of people around him. Suddenly, Jenny's words come to his mind again. The prince is nice to everyone. He treats everyone like a princess. Getting people on his side instantly is something that Wu Yan is a master at. Suddenly, the door to the room opens with a bang, and in comes Kang Yang Mo, expressing his distress about Wu Yan's late arrival. Wu Yan bows to him and greets him, but the man is not in the mood. He looks at Wu Yan and yells at him for making everyone wait for his personal reasons. He accuses Wu Yan of having lost his mind and doing whatever he pleases just because he is popular. How dare you waste his time? Wu Yan calmly apologizes again and assures that it was never his intention to cause any issues, to which Kang Yang Mo responds that he doesn't know what his intentions are but he surely isn't going to sit around and wait for him. He then yells at the other people in the team to sit and start with the rehearsal already. Once everyone is seated, he asks everyone, Wu Yan specifically, if he has read the script. When Wu Yan confirms it, he asks him if it is true that he can memorize a script just by reading it once. Wu Yan confirms that he is indeed able to memorize it at once, but to be able to understand the script, he does need to go through it several times. That was all Kang Yang Mo needed to hear. He snatches the script out of Wu Yan's hand and trashes it, telling him that if he hasn't memorized it yet, he can always take it out from the trash again. When Wu Yan doesn't respond, he figures that he doesn't want to take it out and mocks him once again for lying. He looks at Wu Yan and tells him that he made him feel sorry for him. Hinso Ab stood in a corner watching all of this. From his research, he discovered that Kang Yang Mo was known for being rude and arrogant, yet he had always managed to keep it separate from his work. However, what he had just done had crossed a line. Despite his known bad temper, his acting prowess continued to attract offers, allowing him to thrive despite his vulgar language and unpleasant behavior. And to top it all off, this TV series is being produced by his own agency. Nobody here could dare tell him that he needed to stop. Everyone must be thinking that it's better not to get involved. Looks like there was only one way to calm this situation down. Inso Ab starts walking towards the trash bin but halts when he hears Wu Yan calling him. Wu Yan smiles at him and asks him to leave it since he already memorized the script. Kang Yang Mo looks visibly pissed from this turn of events but is not ready to give up. He suggests that they should start with episode 5 even though this is the first read through rehearsal. The director is puzzled by the suggestion and advises that it would be better to start from the beginning to understand the characters better but Kang Yang Mo cuts him off. He says that since Li Wu Yan already has the script memorized and the rest of the actors have the script already, there is no way that there is going to be any problem. The director finally agrees once Wu Yan also confirms that it isn't a problem for him and he is okay with anything they like. He then gives Kang Yong Mo a meaningful look and asks where they are starting from. Two insane men in one room, whatever could go wrong. When Wu Yan asks where they should start, the director suggests a scene from episode 5, page 14. It is Kang Yong Mo's turn first. So he starts with his dialogue, and Inso Ab, who is standing far away in a corner, can't help but admire his skills. He has a remarkable voice. This series is a period drama set at the end of the Joseon dynasty, and showcases dissension between two intellectuals of the era. Kang Yang Mo takes on the role of one Sik, a translator who has recently returned from China and supports the reformation of Joseon. On the other hand, Li Wu Yan portrays Yang Ha, a Confucius scholar from a renowned noble family adamant about maintaining Zhou Xi'an's isolationist policies, ultimately meeting his demise through assassination. Inso Ab feels glad that the rehearsal is going well despite a shaky start, and both the actors are doing an amazing job at it. But suddenly he feels a shift in the atmosphere when Wu Yan starts to speak once again. His way of speaking was belittling and he looked genuinely angry. Even his dialogue wasn't making sense. Was what he said even there in the script? Nothing in the script suggested that Yang Ha was supposed to be angry. Kang Yang Mo was quick to catch this too and he wasted no time to call Wu Yan out about it. He yells at him asking if he is effing with him because whatever he said wasn't in the script at all. Whatever he is saying feels like a personal jab. Wu Yan denies it saying that he would never do that and tells him that he has any complaints about his acting. He is willing to accept criticism with an open mind. All he did was act and if that offended him somehow, he is ready to apologize. This pisses Yang Mo even further. This brat is suggesting that he isn't able to tell the difference between what's real and what's an act, but he didn't know how to respond to Wu Yan, so he grudgingly yelled at the director to start the next scene. And with that, 
it was evident who came out as a victor for the day. As soon as Insoab steps out, he receives a call from CEO Kim, as expected. The CEO immediately bombards him with a plethora of questions, asking how the day was, if Wu Yan said anything, whether Insoab was feeling any pain or hurt, and if Kang Yao Mo threw a fit. Insoab takes a deep breath and starts responding one by one. First, he informs them that Wu Yan didn't say anything. Next, he tells him that Kang Yao Mo was a bit conflicting in his opinions, but the rehearsal went well nonetheless, and he even left in between. The CEO expresses his relief, and Insoab adds that it's fortunate because even the other actors were worried. However, the CEO interrupts him, emphasizing that his relief stems from him being unharmed and Wu Yan doing well. As for Yang Mo, if he has a good head on his shoulders, he won't think of causing a ruckus in front of the reporters, or at least he'll bring his temper down a notch. Lastly, the CEO asks him to take care of himself and Insoab apologizes for making him worry. His guilty conscience creeps in once again, making him feel how undeserving he is of CEO Kim's concern. The CEO disregards his apology and asks about his plans after Wu Yan's work is done. Insoab responds that he is just going home and resting for the evening. The CEO approves his plan saying that he should rest whenever he can, since once the actual filming starts he'll barely get any chance to sleep properly because of overnight shoots. Insoab agrees and says goodbye to the CEO. He is aware of how people in the entertainment industry have strong and vivid personalities, but experiencing it firsthand today made him feel that he has no energy left. It wasn't comforting to know that what happened today was only the beginning of this dilemma. He wonders if only being with Kang Young Mo in the same room made him feel this way. How is his manager going through it every day? But who is he to think about others when he is in no better position than them? It didn't feel good knowing that people have to go through such tempers and troubles while doing their jobs trying to survive, while what he is doing is with an ulterior motive in mind. He's just here to know Wu Yan's weakness, which is why he has no right to compare himself with those people. Thinking about all of this, Insoab slowly walks towards the car, when suddenly a flash of light blinds him and he falls on his back, just mere inches from getting ran by the incoming vehicle. A man in the car starts spewing all sorts of profanities at him and Insoab could do nothing but apologize to him. He finally gets up and walks towards the driver's window, bowing politely, hoping not to aggravate him any further. The man asks him if he is Li Wu Yan's manager and if he is off work now. Insoab confirms it and when he finally looks at him, he finds that it is none other than a very pissed Kang Young Mo that he has been answering to. He chastises Insoab once again for responding to him as if he were his military superior. Insoab apologizes once again hoping for him to just move on because if he starts to nitpick on him now, he has no idea how to handle it. Kang Young Mo demands that Insoab should get him a soda because his manager has already left. When Insoab expresses his confusion, he repeats his demand and tells him that he cannot wander around because he is a celebrity. This is not good. Holding his throbbing hand behind his back, Insoab contemplates whether he should go or not because Wu Yan had asked him to bring the car around as soon as possible. Yang Mo is not very patient though. He mocks him asking if the manager is busier than the actor himself. There is no point in butting heads with him. Insoab tells him that he'll go and get it. Hearing that, a sinister smile creeps on Yang Mo's face. Insoab runs outside looking for a vending machine. He had no choice after all. The best way is to keep his head down and not create any trouble for anybody else. He buckles with his hands on his knees taking deep breaths, recalling that running a lot might overwork his heart, but what can he do? Luckily, he finally finds a vending machine and hurriedly pushes his cart in. He can't be late but now he has to decide what to take. Yang Mo never told him which soda he wanted. He quickly presses a button but somebody else grabs the drink that just came out. Wu Yan grabs the drink while thanking Insoab and tells him that he is thirsty. He holds the soda can up and tells Insoab that he is the spokesperson for this particular brand. He toyed with the idea that drinking it in front of the press will help him get a contract renewed for it. Insoab listens to him and turns back to his task after a meager response. Wu Yan inquires if he is getting a soda for himself too. But before he can get a response, he advises Insoab against it, saying that he should go for water or ionized soda instead. Water will be the best option since it will be good for his health. This is not the best time for Wu Yan to show concern for him out of nowhere, but now that he is saying all of this, how is he going to get the sodas for Kang Young Mo in front of him? Insoab starts to become anxious and needs to get away from Wu Yan. He tells him that he'll go get the car and asks him to wait here, but Wu Yan suggests that they should go together. When Mu Yan tells him that he came here because he was taking too long, Insoab goes into full panic mode. 
thinking what he should do. He tells Insoab that they should go now. 